Hello. Did you hear me? Did you hear me out there? Let's talk about coax connectors for a second. I get a lot of questions asked to me about coax connectors. We'll try to dive into the wiring diagram, a little quick six minute video, how to look it up, how to find it in the SWPM, how to find your dies and locate your strip map. Handy information to know. Let's dive into it. Let's see what's going on. Okay, here we are inside the wiring diagram. We have to get us an example. So let's look at the global positioning system. Let's look at the coax on the antenna. Here we see D2941. It's damaged, it's mauled. For whatever reason, we need to replace it. First thing we need is part number. Let's go down, get us a part number. Let's look at the 2941. 41. Okay, you've got the Boeing material code and you have the part number of the connector itself. 126-589. Order the part, get it on its way. Now, you still, even though it's a coax connector, you need to go down to the hookup list and look up 2941. And the TT column is blank. So that lets you know, follow the SWPM, use the hardware that comes in the back, and install the connector. It is possible. I don't know of any on a 737, but it is possible that the TT column may not be blank. They may want you to solder it some super tritium, super duper contact or something in it. I don't know. Anytime you change a connector on anything, glance at the hookup list. Don't let there be any surprises. Now we can go to the SWPM. When we come to the SWPM, we look up, we search for our connector. Here it is. And everything you'd want to know about that coax connector is located under 205115. Part numbers, what they mean. Now in the SWPM, the two main things we need. We need to know the crimpers and we need to know a strip map. What are the dimensions to strip your coax? We see the coax connector or crimp tools and what you need you got to find the part number of your connector and we can scroll down till we find that 126 58 126 58 dash 9 and what they're doing is they're giving you a tool code they're giving you one for the contact the center core and they're giving you one for the shield and you may ask why don't they just give me the die number well that'll kind of be clear in a minute but what you need to do is print this page or write this down because you need to look up those two codes and what is this this is like table seven and we need to get to table eight okay here is table eight now you need to find your code and you'll see the basic unit which is the crimper and it's going to give you some die numbers the first one was 069h so we got to scroll down till we find 069H. There's 69. There's 69H. There's 69H. What you have to do is find 069H and the tool that you're using. At Southwest Airlines, you'll find a KTH 1000 almost in every tool crib. This is the hand crimping tool. Now you'll see that 069H, it has multiple dies that you could crimp this pin on the core. One of the big questions that is asked is, a, B, what, what is this? Here, you can see that one of the holes is labeled A and one of them is labeled B. That's what that column is talking about. The 069H is the B die. That's what they mean by that. This is what they mean. And the B hole conforms to the 069H code. This is one of the codes. And these are all the dies that could be used to comply with that code. Now we need, what was it, 213 HLS. So we scroll on down till we find 213 HLS. We have this crimper. Here we have the dies that will do this code. You need to compare the two. What you see here is if you had die 2161, we'll do the pin portion and it will do the shield portion. The pin is done B side of the die. The A portion or the A side of the die 
will do the shield. Now the reason they list you all these because what if you don't have a 2161? Well, you could, if you had a 2061, you could crimp the pin, and if you had a 2211, you could change out the dies and then use the A side of the 2011 to crimp the shield. You can either do it with one die or you could do it with a combination of two dies. Now you can order your crimp dies. And it, at Southwest it typically comes in a blue box with the crimper and it has a set of dies in it. A 2061 is a very common die used in aviation. Now the next thing after you get what crimpers you need is your strip map. And of course 205115 is everything you'd want to know about that, that connector. And here is the strip dimensions right here. It gives you this diagram and then table 11 that will give you the dimensions you need. But you want to go down just like before and you want to find your 126, 58, 9. And here's your A, B, C, and D dimensions. Print this page so you can go out there and strip it. I am going to give you a little tip. This B dimension that they list, shorten it. Make this shield a little longer than necessary. And here's why. By the time you figure out that your shield may be a little too short, you have already crimped the pin on your conductor. So that means you're gonna to have to order another connector because we don't stock extra pins for coax connectors. And you're going to have to start over. It's always easy to pull the shell back off and you can take scissors or your flush cut dikes or whatever and you can always trim off excess shield. But if that shield is short, you're going to have to start over. And you're not going to know if your shielding is too short until it's too late. So be sure on that B dimension, leave that shield a sixteenth of an inch too long. So that means making your B dimension smaller. 12650 of this B dimension, instead of 280 thousandths, make it 200 thousandths. Leave an extra 80 thousandths or a sixteenth of an inch on it, and that'll help in the long run. Oh, I almost forgot something. Let me show you this. Okay, one of the questions I get a lot is, what about the heat shrink on the back of it? Now remember, I said that you can come down here and in 205115 is everything you'd wanna know about that cannon plug. And look down here, it has insulation, installation, configuration, and lo and behold, there's the connector we're working on, a 126589. If we select on there, it shows your heat shrinkable sleeves for these connectors. And it's telling you to get, pick some solvent from table four to clean it. You can pick and get your heat shrinkable sleeve. Now notice it says position of the first heat shrinkable sleeve. That kind of infers that there's going to be more than one. Butt it up against the crimp. You go down here, your second heat shrinkable sleeve goes over the coax and up over the crimp and it's a little longer than the one before it. Then if you go down then it has your third heat shrinkable sleeve a little bit longer than the previous two and goes up and over the body of the connector. This is how you find how they want you to crimp it on and put your heat shrinkable sleeve. It's not one heat shrink. It is three independent ones. Also, don't forget, you need to cut your heat shrink, put it on your coax before you crimp this in place. So you can then slide it up, heat shrink it down. You might get away with it if it's a straight connector. You can get some heat shrink that'll go over the connector and will shrink down enough. But when you've got an elbow, like this one is, that ain't gonna happen. Trust me, I've made the mistake, had to cut the stupid thing off and start over. Remember what I said about making mistakes. <laughs> You're gonna make plenty of them. Like here is the connector installation. Look here, it even tells you the torque value. Well, there's the 126 dash dash, eight to 12 inch pounds. Everything you would want to know about that coax is in 205115 for that connector. Changing the coax connection end, it is a little more complicated than doing just uh, a regular cannon plug. But as you can see, it's not that complicated. And trust me, you're gonna mess it up. The only way to get good at it is to do it.
and you're going to have to do it several times, two or three times, before you get really good. It's just when you make a mistake, just don't make that mistake on the next one. This production brought to you by Slap Yo Mama. Mighty fine hot pepper mix, guaranteed to spicing up your culinary desires. <laughs> Tickle myself.